What's up guys, producer Grant here. I know it's been a while. Uh, I've been promising you guys a mixing tutorial. Unfortunately, I've been having some uh, issues with hardware as far as uh, being able to hook up a second doll and actually record this for you guys. Um, as of right now, everything's set up, ready to go. I could have probably done a tutorial already for this, um, but I felt like it wouldn't be right and I didn't want to put it out there and uh, give you guys some half-assed stuff. So. Um, Anyway, shout out to my boy Mike G from Splurge Gang, who actually provided me with a second interface so that I can uh, do this for you guys. So uh, y'all be sure to check out Splurge Gang's music. They're on YouTube, they're on Twitter, they're on Instagram, on Facebook. Look them up. Hot shit. Anyways, um, so yeah, let's get to it. So I wrote down a lot of notes for you guys. That way I would try not to miss anything. Um, step one, explain how to prepare the tracks for making stems. In case you don't know, stems are basically the tracked out parts of your beat. That's each individual track, each individual sound on its own separate path. That way you can mix it, tweak it, mod it, however you want later in post-production. Some of the things uh, I want to point out. As far as making stems, you should always shoot for a maximum of, you know, negative three decibels per track. In other words, I'll show you here in a second, but once we uh, link all these to separate tracks, you want it to be peaking no more than negative three dB. So anything from here and down is fine. But if it goes over that, you want to probably turn it down, that individual track, turn it down uh, until you get it under negative three dB. Um, that way you can give yourself plenty of headroom when you're mixing, plenty of headroom when you're mastering. Uh, make sure to separate and ungroup any drums or set individual channels. Once again, that's just to separate everything. I recommend to turn off any effects or processing that can be better produced in post-production. In other words, any of my synths or sounds that have delays or reverbs on them, Unless they're just completely radical that I, you know, I just love the sound so much. Um, really, I would, I'd take a shot at doing it in post-production because I feel like I can get a better result. I could really tune it in and tweak it with, uh, you know, those delays rather than the ones that are built into the VSTs. Also, I recommend resetting your panners. So if you, you know, are doing little pre-mixes to see what your beat's going to sound like, yeah, reset these to zero, because when you're mixing, you want to be able to handle that. All right. So what we need to do is get all of these sounds and instruments and drums on their own separate mixer channel. All right. You can mix your songs and your beats here in FL Studio, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. I just prefer to use Cubase. It's um, a doll that I've used for a very long time. And anyways, so to get these over here, what we need to do is first, just double click this uh, first little green dot here. I'll turn all of them green, make sure they're all selected. Come over here, click on channel one. This is important, okay? Click on channel one, then click on this little arrow. You're gonna go to link selected channels starting from this track. Boom. Puts them all there for you. And if you go ahead and name your instruments um, before you do this, whenever you put them over here, It'll have the correct name already labeled for you. That way when you export your stems, they're already named properly, and it's a win-win situation. Now we're gonna go ahead and hit play, and um, remember we're gonna shoot to get each individual track under three decibels, or negative three decibels. So um, let's go ahead and do that now.
right, it looks like all of them are uh, under 3 dB, which is good. I don't like to put any EQs, any effects, anything like that on it here because I'm going to do that later in Cubase. So I like to keep everything as dry as possible. I'll even I'll even go into my VSTs and actually um, turn off the you know you know effects. Not all of them, but some of the effects that I feel I can do better in post production. Um, all right, so now what we need to do is export our stems. Let me drag this over here. You can guys see this. All right, here's, you know, the beat laid out, whatever. Just simple, simple beat here. Um, but I'm going to export it to where it'll, you know, go from the beginning all the way to the end. And it's going to put each individual sound on its own track. All right. First thing we need to do, go to export, wave. Let's find a folder to put it in. Oh, it's unmastered. Tracked out beats. Let's put a new folder here. How about that? Mixing tutorial. All right, we're going to save it as wave 24 bit. Uh, we're not going to worry about MP3 because we're not saving it as an MP3, we're saving it as wave. Uh, this right here is the important part split mixer tracks. Or, there's more important parts, but split mixer tracks. This is what's going to make every mixer track come out um, that you have audio running through. Um, that is your, going to be your individual stems. All right. Leave these settings as is. I've set mine, my quality for resampling to 128 point. Um, some people might say it's overkill or too much. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. My computer can handle it, so why not? Uh, looping mode, leave remainder. That way I don't snip off any tails of anything. The mode is in song mode here, so it's gonna do the whole thing. Go ahead and hit start. All right. Um, it's done exporting. Let's see what our tracks look like here. Oops, wrong folder. Unmaster. Alright, um, <laughs> I use a little free tool called File Renamer to uh, take care of this issue. Um, if you guys have a better way of doing it, let me know. But for right now, this is how I'm going to take care of this problem as far as getting our names right, alright? Let's see, I'm going to go to Unmastered, my folder here, Mixing Tutorials, all right. I'm going to go to Remove. Let's see, um, how many characters? Try 16. Ooh. A big slider there. All right. <clears throat> Preview it first. All right, let's try 17. There we go. All right, hit apply. Boom. Done deal. All right, see they're all labeled. Oh, you can't see them. <laughs> My bad. You're wondering probably what the hell I'm doing. Um. They had the, 
you know, mixing tutorials was in front of every one of these file names. We don't want that. We want it to be just the file name of, of what, you know, each individual sound is. All right, um, we're gonna start a new uh, new project here in Keybase. Um, empty template. All right, this is to me the most important part of um, you know staying organized so you can find your data later. Um, you may need to send it to another studio, another client. You just never know. I usually have like a big, just a major project folder for like my Cubase projects. Same with, you know, I have a FL Studio projects folder. I've got a Pro Tools uh, projects folder, you know. That way it just keeps them organized. Um, inside the Cubase one, I like to separate it by clients or, you know, ideas of stuff I'm working on. So we're going to select the Cubase projects folder, make new folder, mixing. Tutorial. We're going to put a new folder under that. And we're going to date it. Do that. That way we know, okay, you know, we did, you know, several mixing tutorials, but it was the first one we did. You can just look at it there. Get all my stuff set up. You guys can't see my mixer over here, but it's okay. All right. Need to import all of our tracks. All right, we've got our folder right here. All of our tracks and stuff. I'm gonna select them all except they always include a selected track, which is usually a master, and a master. We don't need those. Um, you can use the master track as a reference to what your stuff should actually sound like, um, just in case um, something you know got messed up on the export and you don't think it quite so it sounds right. You can uh, reference it to this track right here. Anyways, we're gonna grab these and take them into Cubase. Align them all the way to the left. Different tracks. Let them import here. This right here is important. The way you can get your delays and everything real tight and crisp. Um, set your BPM. You know, to your project, your original project's BPM. Check it out. Yep. First thing to do is name your tracks. Uh, mine are already named because I did that um, as I made the beat. Made it, you know, easier on me later. Hence, now I don't have to do it. All right, but just in case you haven't, you can go ahead and name your tracks so you know what you're actually um, working on. I like to go ahead and arrange them into two separate categories. All right, anything that are drums or percussive. You know, that would be classified like drums. I would put them um, together. And then any instruments or sounds or VSTs or anything like that, I'll put, you know, on a separate uh, track. I'll show you here in a second. We'll go ahead and separate these out. There's my snares. There we go. Snare, snare, old clap. 
Closed hat, open hat, where's open hat? Gonna crash, all right. Then um, our instruments. All right, and our instruments, you know, our leads, saws, blah, 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 blah. All right. Let's go to add two group channels. Stereo. Name the first group drums. Second group instruments. Go ahead and separate these out and uh, send them to their correct uh, group channel. Yeah, I know you can do this like in one shot, but sometimes it's actually a pain in the butt. So I'd rather just go ahead and <laughs> click them on out so I know they're there instead of like running into problems later and realizing that stuff's not routed the way it should be and this way I know for sure everything is routed where it's supposed to go and if you hit play you'll see the separate groups here the drums just your instruments. All right. All right, and uh, now I'd go ahead and add any effects channels you know you're going to use. Like, I know for a fact I'm going to be putting a delay on my little uh, snare roll. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up. Make sure it's all the way on wet. I'm not going to send anything to it yet because um, I'll show you how to do that as we're actually mixing the beat. We'll just start off for that one for now. Probably add more later. All right, let's get um, some good start, you know, starting mixing levels. Everything should be down as of now, but I would still pull all of the faders down, um, you know, another three decibels. I mean, realistically, I like to pull, pull them down probably five to, you know, five dB. I'll show you the mixer here. What I'm going to do is click on, you know, the first track here. And go all the way down to the last track. Shift, click it. Right click here on the fader. Link channels. Pull them down to around negative five. Or you can go in here and actually type oops, negative five. And I'll go there. Then right click it. This is important. Unlink. You only wanted to link them just so you can change all the volumes at once instead of having to do it all one at a time. Okay? Just a quick little tip there. That way all your volumes are, are going to start out low. It gives you headroom. Um, that way you're not clipping, you know, right off the get-go.
I'm going to do a, a step now that is uh, probably pretty controversial to, uh, you know, different mixers out there. But, you know, a lot of them would agree. And I'm not the guy who created this. This is old news. I just, uh, I just know about it. <laughs> I like to uh, go ahead and set up, you know, like a kind of a pre-mix on my two bus. Um, almost like an audition for what the mastering is going to sound like. Uh, you don't have to spend a whole lot of time on it, but you want it to... Basically, the reason for this is if you put like a mastering chain on your um, two bus and you mix your beat according to that, that's more realistically what your beat's going to sound like. Because if you mix your song and you're like, man, this, you know, the snare sounds poppy and the kick sounds tight and, um, you know, you don't have a two bus, you know, pre-mix type of deal on there. And then, you know, you go to master it, um, you know, some things are going to change, you know, volumes might not stand out as much as you'd like on certain instruments. Um, so it's really going to affect your mix. Um, that's why I like to go ahead and put that on there. And of course, before you master it, you take it off because it's just a dummy mastering chain. It's just there for one goal, you know, just to get you in the right ballpark, take it off at the end, and then you can really master it and get some great results. So what I'm gonna do is hit play. I'm gonna go ahead and start a little mastering chain. I'll pull my mixer over so you can you know, see what I'm doing here. We're gonna go ahead and uh, loop the hook. I just like to kiss it. I don't really want to drive the compressor here. Um, you know, why take away all your dynamics, you know, <laughs> before you even start mixing? Just, uh, just swear it, you know, kisses that compressor as far as gain reduction. All right, I'm not doing a full mastering chain. I'm just doing a little dummy setup here. Throw an L2 on there. begin mixing first things first I like to solo each individual track and go through here and I like to put filters on it um, or an EQ and you know high pass or low pass filter and what that does is you're not gonna you know probably immediately hear um, the difference in each track but when you play it all back together um, you might notice it just seems like there's a little more space in the mix um, and that's going to help each instrument seat in its own spot um, just a little bit better. So it's going to give you a jump on the whole mix as far as getting stuff to, um, you know, sit well together, especially when it comes to like your 808 and your kick and any other, um, you know, bassy instrument. So like I said, we're going to just uh, keep it on loop on the you know hook because pretty much everything's playing. Not pretty much, but every instrument is playing. And um, 
We'll just go through and solo and we'll put a filter on each one. I'll show you guys how I do that. You see the meter here is showing you where the frequencies of this you know, 808 is actually at. There's no high frequencies here. I mean, it's not even showing up. Uh, I've got an analyzer, you know, here in my rack actually, and you know, getting the same results pretty much. There's nothing here at all so you're not gonna hear it but if you shave that off I'm telling you it's gonna it's gonna you know give you more room um, in the rest of the mix you do this to every track you know it's not gonna be the same presets so don't just do this and set it and put it on every track you're gonna have to you know physically come in here and you know change some knobs for every single instrument but it's gonna be worth it I promise Another thing I like to do is even on subs, I like to put um, a high pass filter on it also. You know, somewhere around like 18, 16, 18. Just with a smooth roll off because really, you know, even headphones, you're not gonna be getting much more, you know, lower than 18 Hertz. <laughs> Always, yeah, it takes a little unnecessary rumble out of the equation also now mind you we're not really trying to do a whole lot of bq right now um, all we're doing is just you know filtering i like to do any of my coloring eq after my compressor so um, right now we're just doing the filtering now there are some highs to to this All right, and because we got an 808, we really don't need all of this, you know, subby part, you know, all the low end of this kick. Um, we want it to punch, but we, you know, we don't want it to be fighting for that space in the mix with the 808. Liking that right there. Move on and snare. Roll off the, the top a little bit. This down here, it's unnecessary. There's no reason for a clap, you know, to be down here in the you know, 40 and 50 hertz area. It's just, uh, there's no reason for it. <laughs> just trim it out of the way.
smooth, you know, round off the top here a little bit. That way it's not piercing. Whoa, no way. I don't know what the hell just happened there, but. Instruments. Now remember, we have that 808 and that kick fighting for this space right here. So, you don't want to you know, add any more, you know, muddiness to that area. Damn it, again. All right, let's listen. It's not bad. 
already adds a little uh, room to the mix. All right, I'm gonna go back through them and do kind of the same thing, but with uh, some compression. Um, not just compression, but we're gonna go ahead and you know, try to get these um, sounding pretty good. light ratio on this. I'm a slower attack. A little bit shorter on the release. Once again, we're just wanting to kiss the compressor. Um, I, I really, I really don't like compressing the 808s too much. Um, just takes their bounce away. You know, this isn't the hardest of 808s that I use in some of my beats. It's what I like for this uh, particular song. Sounds about good there. All right. Let's go see what the kick's got to offer. Let's listen to it with the 808. Let's get let's get this to a uh, you know blend together well. touch there just a little bit on the show oops this back up here put some compression on the snare For the most part, these drums are already compressed. Um, I mean, it's just a matter of, you know, getting stuff to fit to your taste and your style and the way you mix, the way you uh, like your stuff to sound. Remember that snare roll uh, send that I set up earlier? 
Go ahead and unmute it. Go back to our snare roll. Go to our sins. Um, we can go ahead and name this so we know what it is. Snare roll delay. All right. Go back up here. Our sins. Snare roll delay. Definitely not on the right uh, timing that we want. some compression on the clap you ain't always got to use the same compressor and whatnot it's just uh this is a quick way for me to do this for you guys it's just simple short to the point i mean the video is you know definitely not really that short but compared to actually mixing this um if i weren't doing a tutorial video it would probably be even longer not probably it would I'm gonna back that off a little bit I don't really need a compressor on the hats right now sound fine Same with the opens. The crash I do like to put, believe it or not. Almost get like a little bit of extra like presence out of them. More excitement.
Now, mind you, the presets you see I'm selecting is just kind of ballpark figure of, you know, actual attributes, you know, on these knobs that I would, you know, be close to using. Don't really need anything on that. All right, now let's listen to it together and we can start mixing some levels together. Go ahead and save it. <laughs> Probably a good idea. Go ahead and um, solo just my drums to get those mixed. Get those mixed together. All right, I'm gonna start from... Uh, Go ahead and just start with uh, 808 in the kit. Now you guys, um, you know, won't see me like moving the mouse on this part really too much because um, I actually have a Mackie Control Universal, so I like to get a little hands-on um, as far as setting my levels.
do the same thing with my instruments. Tear it all together. I feel like the instruments as a whole can come down a little bit. That's why I got them uh, separated. Mod lead can come down a little bit.
let's uh, take the loop off and listen to from the beginning. Just uh, listen to a little bit of it and see how it goes. All right, so uh, that's a basic mix, and um, from then on we can uh, go into mastering, I guess. We gotta export these files also and save everything. All right, before you export, remember go back to your mixer. Turn these off. You don't have to remove them. You can just turn them off. Um, that way, in case you need to make some changes later, you can come back here and put them on and do some changes. Um, you can just turn them off. Um, we're going to export it as 24-bit because that's what the project is already in. Um, there's no sense in you know downgrading the quality to 16-bit just to mix it in another 24-bit session and then go back down to 16-bit again. You know, it was created in 24-bit, it was mixed in 24-bit, it'll get mastered in 24-bit, and the final outcome uh, will be a 16-bit format. For right now, turn your dummy mastering uh, off over here. All right, you can just um, either select all your tracks, whatever, it doesn't matter. You can select the longest one or all of them. You can just hit P. And that'll set your markers from the very beginning to the very end of whatever tracks you have selected. All right, go ahead and hit save again, just to save my project. I'm gonna go to export, audio mix down. Click here. Go out of here. It's 2013. It's a mixing tutorial. Now, like, um, oops, this is not in master. I'm in the wrong folder. I uh, have two separate folders on my desktop, or, uh, you know, one is unmastered and one is mastered. That way I have all my separate files. Mixing tutorial. No, we won't put it in that one. Beats, there we go. Mixing tutorial. 11, 3, 13. All right, um, so it's the right name that we want it. It's the location we want it. I'm gonna change this from MP3. We want to go to Wave. All right, uh, we're not going down to 16-bit yet, so let's keep it at 24. Um, the project is already in 44K. There's no need to uh, you know go up because it's already at this quality and going up would do no good now if it started at 48 or you know 96 um, or 192 you know it'd be better to you know try to keep it there until the very final stages but for now 44 is what it is it's what it's going to stay all right um just go ahead and make sure your stereo output is checked here hit export
All right, once you get your track uh, exported, bounce down. You know, once again, you go over here, hit save, exit this project, open a new project, empty template. Save it under the same, um, oops, the same basic folder. Where's that? There it is. <clears throat> And name it the same thing. Mixing tutorial 11.3.13 mastering. Well, you know that's the mastering session. Okay. that into the left <clears throat> once again I'm gonna loop this general area here the hook or whatever down here turn them off for now <clears throat> put another compressor on here
I like to turn the dither off on this because I use the one in Cubase. Set it to 16 bits. That's what your output is going to be. And there we have it. Well, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the tutorial. I hope you guys can take some stuff from it. Use your own judgment, use your own ears, your own opinions. There's no rule book that says you have to do music a certain way. There's no anybody on here saying that this is the only way to do it. This is the only way to mix. This is the only way to master. There are many ways, many variables. Um, the beauty is, you know, learning to find your comfort zone in um, the way you want to do it and the way you like it. Um, ultimately, if you're producing music or making music to make somebody else happy, you're doing it for the wrong reason. So um, if it makes you happy, that's what matters. Obviously, it makes other people happy if it sounds better. So <laughs> take this, use it to your advantage, and um, you, know, you guys comment, rate, subscribe, let me know. I'll try to put some more tutorials out for you guys. And uh, until then, see you next time.